Why, hello everyone! I'm your lovely host, Innocent, and welcome back to Innocent's Voice Acting Advice. Or as we all love to call it here, Eva! Today's topic is... Do you need headshots when doing voiceover? For clarity's sake, headshots are a time-old acting tactic used for casting and advertisement. So, many voiceover talent have asked this question. Why would you even need headshots when your acting has nothing to do with your appearance? Well, I hope to shed some light on this topic today. Here are a few reasons why you might want headshots for voiceover. Number one, with your voiceover work, you may get the opportunity to play other roles that do require knowing what you look like. Now, this may be something as little as video games that require motion capture, or something as big as a movie. So already having the headshots will help you out with these opportunities. Number two, some companies, although not needing your appearance, will ask for headshots while casting. Many of these companies tend to deal with screen acting more than voice acting. So they're going with what they already know rather than reworking their everything to fit a new mold. Number three, headshots are used for advertisement, either for you or the company you may work for. It puts a face to the voice and comes off more professional. Remember, voice acting only became popular in the last few decades, so many people still expect the standards and practices of screen acting. Now, if you don't have headshots and want headshots, I've linked the video below by Catherine Steele, a theater actress who shares how she DIYs her very own. But on the other side of the spectrum, here are some reasons you may not want to have headshots for voiceover. Number one, it distracts from what you are actually advertising, your voice. You can look however and they'll still pin a sound to you. Beat your skin color or if you have graying hair. Even if it might be subconsciously, people tend to pin sounds to looks. This is the reason many African Americans get the so widely loved. But you don't sound black. Well, yeah, Sherry, that's because you're an old hag that doesn't know shit. Voices can sound so much different from what you look like. So many choose not to show what they look like because of this. Number two, many find it a waste of time and money when they know they're never going to use it. Sure, it might come in handy on a rainy day, but they know they're not going to personally use it. So really, it's just a matter of personal preference. Which brings us to the middle ground, avatars. Avatars is what I do. I don't show my face regularly, but I show off a caricature of what I want to present to the world. It may not look like me, but I think it shows who I would want to be. It shows off my brand and what I can bring to the table. My avatar shows that, although you may not see my face, that I am not childish, nor am I unprofessional. It shows that even though it's a drawing, I'm realistic. But most importantly, it shows that I'm into cartoons. <laughs> really, when it comes to creating avatars, you have to think of it from a brand standpoint. Think of how Mario is the face of Nintendo. He's very clean, presentable, and represents Nintendo for what they are. So, when you're making your own avatar, think about what you want representing you. You gotta be honest, though. It's still you. But you can leave out all the bad parts. So, take Innocent, for example. She's happy, she's bright, and she's not too out there in terms of style. I made that a stylistic choice. Sure, what she wears is considered pastel goth, or alternative, but with how I've styled everything, it doesn't look too out there and more presentable to the quote-unquote normal audience. But hey, if you want a full video on how to make avatars for yourself that reflect you while still being presentable, especially for a brand, let me know. Leave a like and drop a comment saying, more avatars, innocent! <laughs> I think this is all the time I have for today. All in all, it's up to you if you want headshots or not. Now, thank you for watching. Have any suggestions or requests for other Eva topics? Leave them in the comments below. 
Or you can at me on Twitter. It's Creating Love. I'm more than happy to help to the best of my ability. This has been episode number 27 of Eva. Break a leg and go out there and voice act to your heart's content. <coughs> we never speak of that. Anyway, if you liked what you just watched, feel free to click or tap here and it will take you to the latest video on my channel. Or you can let the YouTube algorithms choose a video it thinks you'll like. Magic! And of course, you can click or tap over here to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Come join the cult! We're always open to new members. <laughs> Anywho, I hope to see you all soon. Peace out. Bye-bye!